Democracy That Delivers is brought to you by the Center for International Private Enterprise. And now, to your host, Ken Jakes. Hi everybody, this is Ken Jakes. I am the host of Democracy That Delivers, uh, SIPE's weekly podcast here at SIPE. And I'm joined with a couple of uh, special co-hosts this week. Uh, they're sitting in uh, the studio, and they're both from uh, Belgrade, Serbia. And forgive me if I get the names uh, uh, mispronounced, but we're going we're gonna to work through this. I, 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 for, for listeners, I used to live in Serbia, but it was going back 20 years, so uh, so I'm kind of uh, uh, rusty on my pronunciations of names mm-hmm. here, so I'll give it a shot. Uh, but uh, Nemonja um, uh, uh, Stip- Stiplik, can you help me out? So it's Nemanja. Yeah. Stiplik. It's Stiplik, yeah. yeah. Okay, great. And you're a journalist, right? In, yeah, uh, in I'm... Belgrade. A- I'm founder and editor-in-chief of uh, European Western Balkans web portal. It's a web portal dealing with Euro-Atlantic integrations of all Western Balkan countries. Uh, it's, it's a web portal in English. Oh, terrific. And we're also joined by uh, Igor uh, Novanovic. Uh, he is research director of the International Security Affairs Center, uh, which is the ISIC fund. Uh, his field of research encompasses issues related to international relations and security in particular connected to the European and Euro-Atlantic integrations, regional cooperation and bilateral co- uh, cooperation of Serbia and with other states. Welcome to the studio. How are you doing? Thank you very much. Good. Uh, I'm and, quite fine. And tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, well, <laughs> basically you, you said everything, but for now eight years I work in ISAC Fund in Belgrade, and uh, since two years ago I'm their research director. And uh, for years now I, I've been dealing with uh, running uh, different pro- projects that were dealing with the topics that you mentioned, and one one of my uh, primary targets, let's put it like that, are uh, bilateral relations of Serbia with the third states, so the states out of out of the European Union. Great, and both of you are in town this week. Uh, you're going to participate in the Helsinki Commission uh, uh, event that's going to take place tomorrow, correct? Yes. Yeah, and tell us a little bit about that and in, in what you guys are going to talk about. Well, basically, we, di- we did the research with uh, colleagues from Bulgaria, and that was under auspice of the SIPI Fund project. Uh, we had a research about, uh, about um, influ- uh, economic influences of, of certain third countries, and we want to present that, how, how these influences are affecting democracy, the market economy in, uh, in, in our, our state. Yeah, yeah, uh, in, in, in basically the, uh, the entire Balkans, correct? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And go ahead. We we uh, were, were the team for Serbia, and there are other colleagues that were right. dealing with the other countries. Yeah, and those countries will be. And, and by, by the way, for our listeners, we're going to interview some uh, people from from those other countries in the Balkans. We're going to talk about basically the same thing, but we're talking about Serbia, Bulgaria, I believe Montenegro, uh, Macedonia. So no, like uh, the project was managed fr- uh, from Bulgaria. But uh, the the countries uh, which are I- in projects are Serbia, Montenegro, Macedonia, and Bosnia and Herzegovina. In Bosnia also as well yep. too. So, and when we're talking about outside states uh, in influencing in in the Balkans region, in particular, we're going to talk about Serbia today. Uh, but we're talking about uh, Russia, uh, in particular, uh, the Chinese, uh, the Saudis, uh, the Turks, and uh, tell us a little bit about that. Tell, tell us, uh, you know, what the report. Uh, in, in particular in Serbia talked about? Well, first of all, we uh, assess the, the situation, what is actually going on regarding Serbia's economy, what are the main challenges, and basically after the, um, when the great economic crisis of 2008 started, actually had a huge, huge effect on, on all over Eastern Europe, and in particular in the Balkans, because a lot of foreign capital from the West entered in between, let's say, 2000 to, to, to 2008, our countries. Uh, it uh, helped to strengthen the economy, uh, to strengthen the institutions. And then when the, the crisis started, we had a huge outflow of capital. And actually that caused that our government started to uh, look for the funds on the, on the other sides. And uh, basically, it opened opened the door for. So the, after two thousand eight, that it, it, a worldwide crisis that yeah. basically started with the banking crisis, yes. uh, and uh, so you had private investment uh, that that kind of dried up after that. Yeah. Private investments and, and also lo- from, do- and from loans and loans from, from yeah, banks. Banks were because, uh-huh. because basically um, a lot of banks in our countries were bought by. 
the banks from the West. And, right. And basically, they uh, the the money was taken for 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 other purposes uh, right. in the countries of origin. Right. So. So, so you had a, a massive downsizing of, of investment inflows coming into the country. Yes. So your government and, and people looking for outside investment had to look someplace else. Of course. Yeah. Of, of course. And, and in one moment, we had uh, huge budget deficits, and there were certain countries that were willing to, to assist. But, you know, the, the problem is that this assistance is not that transparent, let's put it like that, uh, like the assistance that is coming, for example, from the IMF or, or World Bank, yeah, yeah, or or from uh, uh, some some of the developing aid agencies, yes. you know, in the United States and in Europe. Yes. Yeah, correct. Um, let's let's get into that just a little bit. Uh, we were talking before the podcast, <coughs> excuse me, um, about the different development models and the different investment models um, that you're talking about and you're talking about in particular money coming from Russia mm -hmm. from China and a few other places and when you're getting money from the IMF and or the World Bank or private investors there's different conditionalities that are attached to that when you're getting Western money um, and also from Western banks the, you know there's, there's transparency transparency models or certain things that that uh, people who are receiving the investments have to a adhere to Tell us a little bit about some some of the uh, money that comes in from, say, Russia or China, and how that how that differs from the traditional types of loans and investments that you get. For example, uh, there there is no so-called political conditionality. So, often money that that is coming from the IMF or the European Bank for Development and, and, right. and Reconstruction is conditioned with certain reforms. Absolutely. Or implementation of certain political things that are expected from us also connected with reforms and sometimes you know these projects could be uh, these loans could be more expensive let's put it like that in in, uh, in in different terms politically more expensive and those conditionalities could be anything it could be uh, that a country has to become a member of the WTO for example. for example or it could be even smaller things like you have to I remember when I was working in Serbia one of the conditionalities and it was little but I remember you would go on the street and you could buy um, uh, pirated uh, CDs everywhere, yeah. and that was one of the conditionalities. We're we're gonna we're not gonna continue the loans until some of this stuff is is removed from the streets. And I mean, there was a lot of little things like that. So it could be little tiny things, or it could be huge things like uh, getting into the WTO, that type of yeah. thing. Uh, for the record, we are still not the WTO member. I know that. I was yeah. just using that as an example, <laughs> right? And uh, and 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 uh, the mo the money that is coming for, from the third states is often there are no conditionalities. Mm -hmm. uh, the interest rates are higher often, but the problem is that uh, the conditionalities are actually hidden. So there are political requests that are of requests that are often coming along the road. Mm -hmm. So after a year, two years, three years. Or if uh, there is a loan for some particular uh, in investment, for example, the, re the reconstruction of, of ra railways, let's say, uh, uh, often governments are conditioned to uh, give uh, the, the, the job to the uh, companies that are coming from the states right. that gave the loan. Right. So basically, uh, so the main contractor for the implementation projects based on that loan are companies, for example, from Russia, and then right. they cooperate from... Uh, the, the bidding local. process is yeah. completely different. The yeah. procurement process is completely that, different. That, 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 and a lot of the rules that in the West that we adhere to and, and we, we expect aren't there. Yeah. And a lot of times, and we're not just talking about Serbia, but talking about uh, countries all over the world, capital that comes in from these types of countries that you're talking about, whether that be China, Russia, um, and some of the other states that we mentioned, um, they kind of take advantage of the lack of governance uh, structures that are in these countries. Um, and it makes it easier for uh, bribery to take place, for corruption to take place, when you don't have those conditionalities in place that we're used to in the West, correct? Yes. yes it, it, it is like that. I mean, uh, often... Uh, all Often, uh, when uh, when when the money comes from these states, is actually it is actually directed towards the sectors where where uh, they can use um, loopholes in the system for the different arrangements. Let's put it like that, and not necessarily these arrangements are illegal. Simply, these are some certain legal 
deficits that exist and that right. you know and they they can take an, they an, an advantage of advantage. It. Give me uh, some examples in Serbia where that's happened, uh, in particular since two thousand eight. For example, um, uh, the, the the we have uh, the gas import uh, gas import distribution and uh, tra transportation company. Um, it's a huge company. Uh, is that, it, that is it is private owned, or public? It's public company, and it's owned. Uh, it's owned by the state. Owned by and, the state. And uh, the CEO and the upper management are the people who are, who are actually political appointees. Mm -hmm. So there was no public uh, call for applications for, for that post. He was appointed by the government. And then that, that, that's... And which, which ministry would that fall under? Um, ministry of Energy? Uh, yeah, probably so, yeah. I think, but uh, the thing is... Um, and then, and, and, and then uh, that same company uh, founded... You know, uh, with with one Russian company, uh, joint joint enterprise that is actually um, an intermediator for for the gas import, and that company is actually in the majority ownership of the of the Russian partner, but the CEO is in the in the same time the member of the board of the, the directors of that company of, right. of that in, in, uh, intermediator, and he receives and that's what we call a conflict of interest. Yes, yes. definitely. Yeah. And then and. <laughs> And and then he receives huge um, uh, um, amounts of money legally, you know, mm -hmm. because I mean he's not breaking any laws. Ta taxes are paid, mm -hmm. and but but still there is a problem with that, as you said. There is a conflict of interest, and right. actually our anti-corruption agency um, issued. Yeah, it's a, a finding. A, yeah, yeah, a finding. finding. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And where where they recommended, uh, actually, I think even ordered uh, that that uh, that that person should resign. Mm. From all, all, all other posts, because because it's not just that he is a member of that board of directors. There are other companies where he is also, right. Uh, so they're benefiting the directly from these yeah. transactions. And I think he is also the member of parliament. Still. Yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, so uh, and uh, and and the thing is, uh, but you know, nothing happened. Yeah. So he, I think he paid fine, for that. That was prescribed. If he does not do it, then eventually nothing happened. Okay. Yeah, and what about what's some other examples? Well, uh, right now, uh, for for example, um, yeah, uh, uh, th there is also one loan uh, that that yeah. that came from from Russia, I think, in two thousand thirteen, exactly for the reconstruction of the of, of the railways, and they uh, and they basically conditioned the government that they have to take. Um, that they have to uh, that the, that the main contractor has to be from Russia. So basically, they uh, the one Russian company is is actually implementing the the whole project. It's all it's it's uh, also with the, with the Chinese loans. You know, like I think we we had the uh, Chinese loan for building. Um, and let me back up just a second. Yeah. When you're talking about Chinese loans, is it their equivalent to uh, the, you know. Uh, a direct loan from their government, or does it come from private investors? Uh, is it kind of like uh, what they're trying, to, what the what the World Bank and IMF does, e even though it's just it's localized, you know, with the, with the with the Chinese? So basically, it's uh, the 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 Chinese law coming from Chinese government. Chinese government, and you know, like uh, we are obliged. It's a loan for a new bridge on Danube. Mm -hmm. The bridge is already already in use. But uh, is we this were near Belgrade, or uh, it's in Zemun, it so okay. Be so part of Belgrade, mm -hmm. so western side of Belgrade, and uh, uh, we are obliged to the Chinese companies and Chinese workers to come to build the so bridge. That's part of the contract. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. And uh, what, what's what's coming of that? The, the, the deal's already been done. Yeah. 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 The, the bridge is already in use. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. So they opened the bridge last year, I think. Oh, two years ago. Two years ago. Oh, it's already, yeah. it's already been built. Yeah, yeah, thing, that's so. right. Okay, all right. And uh, what what was the uh, repayment structure of the loan? Well, uh, I th I think that uh, the the interest rate uh, was a bit higher than usual a traditional loan. You know, yeah. That we are getting, for example, from EBRD or or some other institutions, uh, and uh, I think that they they have to repay repay it in the next twenty thirty years. Okay. All right, and then what happens if it does? You were talking about some of the hidden things mm -hmm. that, that are in these contracts. What what happens if there's a default on a loan or late payments? Well, uh, I guess that uh, that could be settled down politically. 
So our government would probably enter into negotiations with a with the Chinese government, and then they will find out the way out. But the problem is, and what is happening when you have loans like that, and we had, I think, recently the case with the with the Greek government, which is also co cooperating with Chinese. They they uh, rented P uh, Piraeus Piraeus. Uh, port, uh, port. For, for 99 years, uh, Chinese rented the Piraeus port as the main focal point for the okay. for, for, for for the entrance into the Balkans and and then import and then to Europe in general. Europe, and and basically, uh, you know, these governments are sometimes using f uh, doing favors to the Chinese o over s some important political issues. Mm -hmm. For example, when you have to align with a certain EU foreign policy uh, declaration or if you are, if that state in question is a already an, a, an EU member state, they uh, you usually do not vote for certain things right. that are directed towards China. And right. Yeah. So, so there's a lot of uh, unspoken political favors that that are that are, and and of course we're also talking about political favors that is so far down the road. None of these people is going to be around in. Uh, they're not going to be an officer. A few will be. And the reason I mention that. Years and years ago, going back 20 years, um, I worked uh, in Georgia, Republic of Georgia. And this is about the same time that I worked in, in Serbia. But both governments, in particular Georgia, they would get a lot of loans from the IMF and World Bank. But the attitude within the government was, well, we don't really don't have to worry about this because we're talking about repayment in 30 years. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it was all deferred. You know, they didn't have to start paying it back right then. And they all knew that they weren't going to be in office, and you know they, they've already gone through you know three political regimes since since I was there because you had Shevardnadze, Saakashvili, and then and then the new guy that's there right now, and so it wasn't their problem, so they didn't have to worry about it. As as in any democratic country, although we are young democracies, uh, there there is this four year term issue you know, exactly because yeah. people in function think only about the four only about years that. they don't think how, down the road and how to be reelected. They think about their electorate, how to fulfill their desires, their what, uh, what uh, they would wish to see happening in those four years, and that is a problem. So, And quite often, e like people, even at the beginning of their mandates, are not uh, implementing heavy reforms. I'm not talking now about Serbia. Right, in, in general. Over, in general. Even they are not uh, interested in implementing hard reforms because they are afraid that that could contribute to, right. to their remo removal to power. Right. Although it, it is a custom when you are at the beginning of mandates. Right. Well, the dangerous things, if you, and we're talking about different mm -hmm. different models of investment, different models of loans, when you look at the contracts of the IMF and the World Bank, there's specific things that will happen if that money is not repaid. And of course, you can negotiate later on down the line. But what you're talking about, there's so many hidden things, especially political things, that's that's not in there. So it's 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 Go ahead. You're one, going to say something. One, one, uh, usually, all these contracts about uh, about joint investments or, for example, a long-term gas delivery contract are hidden from public. That's right. So basically, there is. Whereas the World Bank and IMF, it's completely there, transparent. There is an interstate agreement between the two sides, which often has just several ar articles mm -hmm. that, that that say basically nothing. Just you know. They set the, the general framework, but mm -hmm. the technical things yeah. are not uh, are are hidden from public. Hidden, yeah. From public and and that's uh, by design. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And 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 quite often, uh, be, and that that is happening because precisely because they are based on the interstate agreement, and if there is a according to the constitution, if there is an interstate agreement that presides that uh, it has bigger importance than the. Constitution and the domestic law, so you know, it transcends the domestic le legislation, and quite often, certain things that are allowed in these contracts are not are not allowed, uh, you know, by the laws of the state. What do you guys see in terms of the impact on uh, Serbian business, uh, the Serbian general public, and politics in general uh, when you see more of these types of loans coming in? Uh, well. Uh, First of all, uh, there is uh, these loans are not coming on their own. So right. it's, not, it's not just about economic operation, but you have to see that there, there is a larger geopolitical picture. There are certain events that happened before that that 
actually uh, also caused the entrance of, of all of these countries. For Serbia, the, the, the most serious thing that happened in the past 10 years is, of course, the proclamation of independence of Kosovo. And, th and that was the point when actually some certain third states, in, in particular Russia, entered reappeared again in the Balkans. Reappeared is a better way to yeah. frame Yeah, absolutely. And, the, and then, uh, of course, they, uh, their tools, when they reappeared, is not, is not just, you know, to give loans or, or uh, a de not development pro project, infrastructure projects, uh, but they, 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 what they also do, they, they, they founded media, and, and Nemanja can tell you more about it. Yeah, I want to get into that, uh, actually. Uh, they founded their, their media, uh, they, uh, they they are influencing certain sectors, and of course they are spreading information that are quite favorable about about uh, their their influence. Their actually that they are contributing to the overall success mm -hmm. of the economy. But if you look at the facts, what's on paper, you know that does not correspond to no. each other. So that that image that yeah. they project, and then what you have on paper, the these are two different worlds. Now, is is the image of the West and the United States and also, uh, and, I, and I know when I was there, the Germans were very heavily involved uh, in investment in, in your country. I don't know if it is much anymore. I, we can talk about that a little bit. But is this new capital coming in having a direct impact on the way that the West is being perceived in your country? You can go ahead and answer that one. Yeah, so basically, still the citizens of uh, our uh, country, Serbia, they think that, um, you know, when we have like um, this service, who is the most, uh, who, uh, who, which country uh, in, um, invest the most in Serbia, not only, not only in, in investment, but in, in development and ed, uh, people are putting Russia on the first place, China on the second. Even it's is that new to you? Uh, again, I haven't been over there in about twenty years. So, so basically, it 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 happens after two thousand and eight, I think. After the crisis. So after the crisis. So somehow people, people, citizens believe that uh, Russia and later China are the most, uh, the biggest, the countries which uh, um, invest the most in, uh, in the country, but uh, it's opposite of course the f on the first place is european union right germany italy and so on and so on then united states and even i think japan invest more than russia, than russia. yeah so it's a public relations problem uh, at, at this point yeah more more than the actual facts but, but go ahead but that is a general weakness of that is the, the general weakness of the eu because right. they are rather bad in pr in in promoting of what they achieved and what right, and, right. and what they did for yeah. the candidate yeah. and potential candidates. Which gets me into the next question is how they're influencing the media. So like from 2012 uh, several Russian outlets appear in Serbia. You know somehow Serbs are traditionally very close to Russians mm -hmm. culturally in, in religion and so on and so on. So like this these outlets uh, find their public in Serbia. But the crucial moment be uh, began in 2015 when Sputnik came with uh, with um, its uh, service in Serbian language, so and explain for our listeners what Sputnik is. Sputnik is Russian state-owned news agency. Uh, it's uh, it's it's based in Moscow, of course, and uh, uh, it's uh, it it was established uh, in beginning of 2010s uh, by merging older. Uh, 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 older agency, uh, I forgot the name, and uh, and the radio voice of Russia. So now they they have Sputnik news agency with radio, uh, which works in uh, more than twenty languages. Uh, in the Balkans, their office is in Belgrade. Uh, they work. They have um, a website in Serbian, but also radio program. Radio program is uh, is. Uh, free of use also the news program is free of use so uh, media in serbia uh, took their agency news and the uh, republished them very often uh, radio program is uh, broadcasted uh, through local radio stations in serbia i think more than 30 radio stations in serbia broadcast 
every day. And they're very active on social media as well. Of so. course, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. Even Serbia. Terrific. Um, from your point of view, from a journalist's point of view, um, what what do you see? Do you see this trend getting worse? Uh, in, in terms of, I mean, we all kind of laid out the facts. I mean, you, you said it's very clear that, uh, you know, more investment comes from the EU and the West than it does from, from other of these countries, but, but, but it's, it's really kind of a public relations issue. Do you see the EU or your own government uh, countering this, uh, local media that's uh, Serbian-owned media countering this? So basically somehow Serbian media, uh, majority of Serbian media, let's be honest, are... Uh, influenced by the government mm -hmm. and they are uh, not interested in in um and they have a vested interest what the, the, your government a lot of people within the government have a vested interest to keep this to keep this to yeah continue. that's right yeah. so you have a very big majority of serbian media who who are on this line together with all these uh, uh, all these things so uh, you have tabloids influenced by the Russian stories, and you have even prominent websites uh, which uh, totally uh, republish, so rebroadcast Russian program, and so on and so on. Uh, even uh, you so like even even the topics coming from uh, from Sputnik become the major topics in the society, like uh, armed trade and something like that, which were never Defense ever industry. Defense industry, right. which were never ever topic in in Serbian media, mm -hmm. somehow it become the most uh, the, the one of the top of, you know, top top topics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Although in reality, actually nothing is happening. Nothing no, is happening. Exactly. Yeah. So it's so like yeah. you have like like let's let's be honest like th several several uh, aims of this. The first one is uh, uh, something like. Uh, degradation of democracy like uh, because uh, because majority of topics coming from this kind of outlets are uh, speaking about democracy as something something bad that we need strong head a hand who will who will guide us and so on and so on in and com com and making these uh, comparisons between between western style of democracy and and maybe uh, uh, this this eastern way of of dealing with uh, with it also like um uh, making uh, some points in in uh, in this uh, uh de 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 degradating i think i don't know the term for degradating, yeah. degradating like european union and mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and uh, nato for example uh making them that they are not in the line with what is the future of serbia and so on and so and on. The interests of the Serbian people. Interest of Serbian people and and similar things. At the end, for for sure, like uh, transatlantic relations, like also also are are the topic. Well, wh what in your opinion is the biggest threat, uh, in particular from the Russians and the Chinese? Is is it a public relations uh, um, offensive that they're really putting on more important than the actual investment itself? Uh, can you rephrase it, please? Yeah, uh, you know, we, 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 we started the, the program talking about the inflow of capital coming in from these countries, and you guys established essentially that, you know, perception is different from fact, that the fact is okay. still okay. much more capital is coming in from the West than it is from, from these countries, but that these countries are winning the public relations war. Wh which, which is more important as you move forward? Is, is it the inflow of capital, or is it countering the... the the public relations attacks on 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 the region. I think I think that they should go hand in hand. Hand in hand. Okay. You, you cannot divide one thing from from the other. Uh, first and uh, the the first thing that that you said regarding the capital. I don't think that anything is wrong. That 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 nothing is wrong uh, with the capital coming from some right. authoritarian, uh, authoritarian re regimes. It it is not the question about the capital it's a it is the qu question if this capital is undermining the very system so right. what we should talk about is how to improve our system when that kind of capital comes that it could be easily countered or if it's clean it is without political significance right. like it's put like that it can enter right really. let me ask one last thing and i ask all my guests and it's if you were to come back five years from now and we do this podcast again 
what would we talk about? How, how would things have changed or, or would they change? What, what, how do you predict what's going to happen in five years? Are these trends going to continue? Uh, do you, are, you, are you optimistic that things can kind of get back on the path where you would like to see? Well, I can give yeah, yeah. yeah. Start and I will, I will okay. continue. Uh, <laughs> I, I think that we are now in the uncharted territory. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen something like this ever before. So, so the, the thing is that what I believe is that some kind of EU integration of our, of our region will happen, definitely, because these are, this is the imminent geopolitical interests of, of the West and, uh, and mm -hmm. the European countries. But again, Russia rema will remain assertive, Russia and the other states, mm -hmm. because uh, they, they realize how cer certain things could be done. So probably uh, we will not be in the same situation but some things would would remain would remain in place will remain in place so uh, it, it's not only about about uh, western balkan states but it's about uh, eastern europe and in, in general, in general. Yeah. yeah yeah and and even the western europe and yeah even the western europe yeah. yeah yeah it's not so and of course some other countries will appear as as Turkey. from the balkans to the baltics yeah, yeah. all the way up no, yeah. no, but, but even in the west even yeah. in the west and on the other side uh, and, and not only uh, so we, we, some other countries will appear up, up here in the turkey emirates and and so on and so on terrific well we're out of time i think we've actually gone over what we normally do but we could talk on probably for another half hour at least so as to me it's very interesting because i lived in that part of the world for a long time and i really enjoyed having you guys in and uh hope we can come back and do this again and, and uh have fun tomorrow up on capitol hill talking to, uh, at the helsinki commission and I'm sure it'll be, it'll be a, a really good event. So thanks a lot. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Okay, see you next week. You've been listening to Democracy That Delivers. For more information about the Center for International Private Enterprise, please go to our website at sipe.org. That's C-I-P-E dot org. Thanks for listening.